by Illinois Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger. Uh, Congressman, thank you for being with me. Hey, good morning, Jose. How are you? Good morning. You, you recently said that you're open to a debate about background checks. What do you think it's worth discussing now when a lot of other folks, including many, most Republicans, don't? Well, look, I think most Republicans would say that it's good to have the discussion. We've been having gun control debates in this country for 100 years, and we'll have them for another 100 years. It's a legitimate conversation to have. Where the disagreement comes down is, you know, we believe that, and, and I think rightfully so, that debate belongs in the People's House. That debate belongs in the U.S. Senate, the U.S. House of Representatives. And you try to find an area where you can get to common ground or you can get something done. Look, we all agree that people that shouldn't have guns uh, shouldn't be buying guns. Uh, now, how do we get to that as an answer without infringing on Second Amendment rights. What I'm concerned about, though, is the president in doing these executive orders, many of which, by the way, are, are pretty toothless. When he did these, though, he's put both sides in their corners and I think really taken away any opportunity to get some things done. And so when we talk about things that the president is suggesting, including, for example, being very clear on those that sell weapons, guns or rifles to anyone else, should be the, under the same scrutiny as if you're selling it in a store, as if you're selling it online, for example. What, are, what can be possibly wrong with that? Well, I don't think anything's wrong with the idea that if you deal or you sell guns, you have to be licensed. That's basically the law today anyway. Uh, but when it comes to the details, okay, if my dad decides to sell me his pistol or if I to sell somebody my weapon, does that count? Do I have to be an FFL? Well, probably not. It's a federally licensed dealer. If I don't have to be that, okay, then what's the exemption? What's that threshold? Those are debates that shouldn't be in the Oval Office where one man made a decision. That's the kind of stuff that needs to be in Washington, D.C. I'm a staunch advocate of Second Amendment rights. I'm a gun owner myself. Uh, but, you know, if we're going to have this debate, and we should, it belongs here, not by just executive order. But, Congressman, why is it not being done? Why is that responsibility, which you so specifically claim should be in the People's House, why isn't that discussion ever carried out in the People's House? Well, I'll tell you, it's not going to be carried out now in the People's House because when the president does these executive orders uh, and blames Republicans, which, by the way, many Democrats are for Second Amendment rights and have scuttled previous discussions, when he does that, both sides say, all right, we're just going to fight over the executive order and not talk about this issue. Uh, but secondly, and I know it's not fun to say, but sometimes inaction in Congress is action in and of itself. It's the people, in essence, saying that they don't want to take the kind of movements that are being suggested. Look, we all want to stop what's going on. We all want to stop terrorism. I think the president needs to address terrorism, which is what we saw in California. Mental health, these are all areas where we can come together and agree, but unfortunately, I think both sides are going to be put in their corner here. Congressman, thank you very much for being with me. It's always a pleasure to see you, sir. You bet.